So this is Ishan, one of my favourite commanders. I love his artwork. But I thought, how epic would it be if I had a command zone that matches him perfectly? I want to make a Japanese style shrine that cradles him as he's preparing to cause destruction on the battlefield. The problem is, I can't buy one, so I'll have to make it myself. I decided to make the main structure of the plinth out of black foam board. I like this material because it's cheap and easy to work with. I cut it into small strips to create the four sides of the plinth. I then used these as a guide to make the square top. This ensured that everything lined up correctly. I peeled off a paper layer from the foam board so I could more easily add texture to the material down the line. Then I used a hot glue gun to join all the parts together. Because the paper layer was removed, it makes it much easier for me to carve in details with a pen to look like a rubble wall. The next step was to grab some aluminium foil from the kitchen, scrunch it up into a ball and use it to texture the foam to make it look like rocks. This just breaks up the surface to make it look more organic. For the top of the plinth, I wanted to create a cobblestone effect. So I just measured out the pattern with a ruler and carved it in using the same technique as before. I then used the aluminium foil again to press in the rock texture. I mounted my foam board plinth to a piece of 3mm MDF that I had previously cut down to size. I like to use a sturdy base material like MDF because I find that if you use cardboard, the corners will tend to bend up as the paint and glue dries and yeah I, th I think that looks kind of bad. And then I made a small staircase um, using all the same techniques to match the plinth. Now it was time to move on to making the red Tory gate. I think that's what they're called but please correct me if I'm wrong. I drew out a plan to scale so I could use as reference when cutting the wood down to size. I'm using balsa wood because it's really soft and easy to cut with a craft knife. Also, most model shops sell it in a range of sizes and profiles. I'm just using my drawing as reference and taking measurements and cutting the wood down to the correct size. Once I had cut all the parts to size, I stuck them together using super glue. The last part to make was the top piece that had a gentle arc across its length. I had to do a bit of carving to achieve this shape and also be extra careful as to not cut myself. The final touch was to create some stone footings for the Tory gate. I thought this would help make the gate and the plinth look like they belong together. I used all the same techniques that I used on the plinth to create the stone effects on the gate footings. Then came the most important step to have a cup of tea and stare aimlessly out of the window. This is also a good opportunity to ask a massive favour. If you're enjoying this video, please like, subscribe, share, you know, all that good stuff. I'm just starting out, so I really appreciate all the support. But let's get back to it. After that break, I began work on creating the cradle that would hold my commander. I did this using the same techniques that I used for the Tory gate. I drew a plan and then cut all of the bits of wood to the correct lengths. I constructed the cradle on top of the plinth so I knew that everything would line up correctly. But I only stuck the plinth in place using blue tack so I could remove it when it came to the painting stage. I used cut up coffee stirrers to create the wooden plank effect that the commander would rest on. Now that I had my three elements constructed it was time to breathe some life into the base. I started by gluing larger rocks I found in my garden onto the base. Then I applied PVA glue to the MDF and placed some smaller rocks into position and then coated the whole thing in sand that I got from a local beach. I continued and repeated this process until the whole base was covered in sand. Once this was complete I set this aside for a couple of hours to dry. Finally, we are ready for my favourite step, painting. I like to use test paints from my local hardware store. They are cheap and often have a great range of earthy tones that are perfect for projects like this. 
They also have really great coverage, as in the sort of density of pigment is really good compared to a lot of cheap craft paints, which can often be really watery. As you saw, I'm mixing up a grey and white to create sort of a mid-grey base colour for my stone. I made sure to be generous with the paint to make sure it got in all of the sort of nooks and crannies of the rocks. And then I just uh, got some brown paint and uh, thinned it down a little bit with water and painted the ground to sort of look like soil. I then let that dry completely before beginning the next step, which is black washing. This process involves watering down black paint so that it is very diluted. I then applied this to the plinth, letting it seep into all the recesses and removing it with a paper towel if I had applied too much. This is not an exact science, but I slowly built up the look I was after. I then repeated this process with greens and reds to break up the grey. It is important to be really subtle when adding these colours. It is always surprising to me how much difference these small touches of colour can make to helping the stone look more realistic. Then I finally dry brushed the stone with a lighter grey colour to highlight the high spots of the texture. Dry brushing is a versatile painting technique. It is very easy and achieves great results as you can see. Now it's time to paint the Tory Gate the iconic bright red colour. I think in hindsight the red is a bit dark and not as orange as I would have liked, but I think it still looks great. I used the same red colour on the Commander Cradle. I mixed it from two shades of red Citadel paints I had knocking around. Because the wood was so porous I had to dilute the paint to help it flow across the surface more easily. Things are starting to come together. I went to my local hobby shop and picked up some scenics, things like flock, static grass, wood shavings, pebbles and mini shrubs. I started with the largest things first, so in this case I cut small tufts off the shrubs and stuck them randomly around the base, trying to make it look as organic as possible. I tried to imagine if I was a mini bush, where would I want to grow? And that is where I put it. Then I paint patches of PVA for where I imagine the moss might grow, and then cover that with flock. I randomly place these pre-made grass tussocks around wherever look good. These things are great, they have a sticky bottom, so you don't even need to use glue to stick them down. The final step is applying the grass. To do this, I start with PVA glue wherever I want the grass to be. Then I scatter pebbles, static grass, and wood chips over the glue, trying my best to make it look as organic as possible. Then I repeat this process around the rest of the base, working in small patches as I go. Finally, I wanted to add some more detail to the Tory gate. So I painted the top black to add some contrast. I also painted some tiny kanji symbols on the gate. I'm sure this makes no sense at all, but I just wanted to try some mini calligraphy. I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it adds a nice bit of detail to the piece. And here is the final result. I'm really happy with how it turned out, and now I want to do this for all my commanders. We also made a new samurai design for our armor plate. Uh, check it out on our website. Thank you for watching through the video, and please let me know what projects or commanders you would like me to do next.